We praise the Lord and greet us in the awesome and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Just thanking God for allowing us to be in another Bible class. I'm going to be starting a um, a new uh, it's not necessarily new to me because I was blessed to be able to teach this class and at the convocation and there's so much in it I want to continue to uh, just really dig down in it and bring out some other uh, teachings within it and tie it from the old bring it from the old to the new testament because what the old testament is confirmed amen it's confirmed by the new testament and so we are, uh, and, and, and I want to I want to be teaching from a lesson, creating internal internal leadership, creating internal leadership. If you want to write that down because we want to spend some time on that and and just put some components together. Hope to to see what God would mean, and when He was speaking, we're going to be coming out of the book of Jeremiah, the thirty uh, first chapter of the book of Jeremiah, and creating internal, creating, having leadership abilities and tendencies from the inside. What God all God went through to to get his purpose and his plan on the inside of mankind and humankind even in spite of uh, how how they 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 broke it did not fall in God moved from the tablets of stones and and he is desire was to put his law into the inward man. And this is why you can really appreciate and thank God for the for the Holy Ghost. Let's let's look at the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. The 31st chapter, and I want to read a four verses in that particular chapter. Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, creating internal leadership, internal leadership. teach a lesson in uh, convocation you only have this so, so long in teaching and there's so much in it you know it just you can really continue to teach it and so this is why you you, you, you go back and revisit lessons a lot of time and creating internal Leadership, write that down. Created internal leadership. Let's see. In Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. I want to I want to start reading at the 31st verse of the, of the 31st chapter. Behold, the days come says the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with the, their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt 
which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying no the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. God bless your word. Give us understanding and revelation. Have your way, Jesus. Bless us again. God, we pray for those that are listening and watching. God, we pray for a mighty move, for supernatural miracles and healing and deliverance. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We praise you and we worship you. In the beauty of holiness. In Jesus name. Amen. Creating. Creating. Internal. Leadership. Creating. Internal. Leadership. Again I say I was blessed. And, and, and graced to have the opportunity. To teach this lesson. In, in the convocation. And. And just having, you just only have so many minutes to get into something when you teach a lesson like this. And God has still been blessing me with my mind, has still been turning. Just think about this particular lesson creating internal leadership. Internal leadership. It is something when you, the book of Jeremiah, when you read Jeremiah, Jeremiah uh, was such a, 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 a powerful man of God. Even when you go back over into the, the, the first chapter of Jeremiah, you will see how God blessed him. And even before, his, before, before he came forth, God had already, you know, it's amazing how God can already pick you out. Even though you have not even started walking into to, to the plan and the purpose of God. Because now when you read, turn back, turn to the first chapter of Jeremiah. I just want you to see this. The fourth verse, really the fourth verse is where I want to. Uh, now he says, did the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed thee. In the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. I sanctified you. Now, this is God talking about Jeremiah and ordaining you. I, God knew it. He sanctified, had him set apart. And he ordained him a prophet. Unto all the nations. That is amazing. Even before we. Even before God. That, this is why. It is a blessing. To not only know God. But to thank God. For being who he is. And having the power. And the ability that he has. Because God already knows us. And he already knew us. Everything that we encounter. Everything that we've been through and went through, God already knew we would face it. 
I'm telling you, saints, he already knew it. He already knew it. And this is what he was saying about Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, Jeremiah was so committed to God. He was so committed to God. And, and, and even here, he already talking about saying, I cannot speak. And, and, and God telling him, if, if, if God is preparing you for something, just, just let God have his way, saints. I'm telling you, because if God said, because he says that, but the Lord said unto me, say not that I am a child, but thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of thy faces, for I am with thee to the liberty, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Good God. Right there you see some symbolism of of, 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 of being filled with the Holy Ghost right there. That's some symbolism in typology because God touched his mouth and even in, in the, on the day of Pentecost they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues that the Spirit gave them uttering. So he touched his mouth. He touched his mouth. And he said, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I have put my words in thy mouth. And see, I have set this day, set thee over the nations and over the kingdom to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. It is amazing, even before. He started walking in the plan and the purpose that God had for him. God already knew. God already know. It is. This is why you again. I can say you should appreciate God because God already knows everything. Amen. Amen. He already knows, and this is what he was talking about, Jeremiah. But now Jeremiah went through some stuff. Jeremiah went through some some. He went through some pain. I'm telling you, he went through some suffering, but he was committed to God. The people, his families, and people, the priests, different ones, and different ones turned against Jeremiah. It's bad when you got when you are doing what God instructs you to do when everybody done turned against you. So Jeremiah went through some stuff. Now. He went through some stuff, but because he was committed. This is what this is why you should appreciate your relationship with God and being able to endure, go through some stuff because you're going to face some opposition and you're going to face some storm. You're going to face some trouble. You're going to face some trials. You're going to have some tribulation. But but the, the, the thing that you should always be committed to God. And if you're committed and if God got his hands on you. God have ordained what you are doing God will get you through it saints I'm telling you he'll get you through it and so now the thing that because of, of Jeremiah being the prophet during this time and God had ordained him Judah and Israel they had they was really into a lot of work out of worshiping now when you go back over into the 31st chapter this was during the time when God was, was trying to, to, to turn his people back to him because they had gotten in such bad condition. They were worshiping idols and they were with altars and worshiping all, doing all type crazy stuff. But it is a blessing that God is still gracious to them. And he would eventually turn them back and, and, and get them straightened out. Because at this particular time, when he talked about in the 31st ver verse of the 31st chapter, and because Israel was so in such a mess, the Lord said, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. I'm going to do a new agreement. I'm going to do, I'm now, I'm not going to, because if you read it in, in, in throughout this Bible, you'll see where they continue to break the law. And even when, when God gave them the law, they, they broke it. 
And he even say, I'm not going to put stuff on tablets of stones anymore. This is why you are not seeing the time that we are living in in this dispensation. God has not put things right on tablets of stone, but he's, he's, he has put them on the inside of man. And this is a blessing where you can really appreciate the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, that, that now God is being a spirit for they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So I'm going to put my law I'm going to put my law on the inward part. I'm not going to allow them because they continue to break the law. They continue, and then after they broke it, God rewrote it. And they continue to do the opposite of what God asked them not to do. But now when it comes to now, the fact that he has put his law on the inward part, God does not have to go and rewrite the law if mankind disobey now, now they just have to repent. But he had to do something different back then. He had to rewrite it. He had to straighten them out. He had to lead them out. Led them out of Egypt. In the scripture it talks about when he led them out of Egypt. When he would direct them into the promised land. He was, he had to, he had to, God had to justify, hold them by the hand to do it. But now God has given us the Holy Ghost my God and you put it on the inside saints, and it is to lead and guide us because right here was pointing toward Pentecost right here in Jeremiah was pointing toward people being filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost because say I'm going to do uh, I'm going to give them a new and a better covenant I'm going I'm to put it on the inside I'm not going to have to take them by the hand. When they break the Lord, when they disobey me, I'm not going to have to rewrite it again for them. They're not going to have to just carry it around literally like this, but they're going to carry it on the inside. I'm telling you, saints, to God be the glory. Hallelujah! And so now what we see here, this was during the time of Josiah Josiah was the king of Judah at this time. Josiah was the son of Amon. Amon was the son of Mananesah. Mananesah was the son of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the son of Ahaz. So now, when you get Josiah here, Josiah was instrumental in helping this reform to get the peoples back straight now because he was a God-fearing king. Josiah was the 16th king of Judah. Now, but the thing, his, his father, Amon, was a wicked king. It is a, now, his Grandfather Mananesseh was also a wicked king. They had altars and worship idols. But now Hezekiah was want to do right. And this is the same Hezekiah that God added 15 years to his life. And this is his lineage. Now, Mananessa, instead of doing like his father Hezekiah, he did like his father Ahaz, which was wicked. Now, it jumped Ahaz, Hezekiah, bad, good, bad, Mananessa, bad, Amon, then come back good with Josiah. And this is God used Josiah, the 16th king of Judah, to help bring about this change in the life of not Judah and Israel. It is a blessing, saints, how he used them. But the thing that's so amazing and 
interesting is that bad, bad, and then good, you, you have to look at it and see that you can always break a generational curse. Josiah broke a generational curse that was on them from Manasseh to Amon to Josiah and still Hezekiah and then come from Ahaz. And so now his, his, his father, his grandfather, his great-grandfather, his great-great-grandfather and all of them but now you all know the story about Hezekiah. When he turned his face toward them, he told them, get your house in order. And God spared Hezekiah and added 15 more years to his life because Hezekiah was doing some good stuff. But then here now, it is amazing how from good or bad, bad, and then back to good. And here Jeremiah, during this time, he was the prophet during the time when, when Josiah, because Josiah was involved in the reform, correcting and straightening the folks out, and peace and prosperity, God was using him. I'm telling you. <laughs> when it, is, it is so awesome because when you start looking at things, you can see how how from a from a from a psychology perspective and a sociology perspective and even from generational how that because my father was like this that don't mean I have to be like this because you can always change and because Josiah changed from the way his grand his father and his grandfather it seemed like he connected with his great grand not connected with his great great grandfather Ahaz. His connection was with his Hezekiah. That is amazing. So it it don't be because, because my father was like that. That don't mean I had to be like that. And this is the issue. Even when you look at biblical uh, lineage and biblical genealogy, you can see a lot of those signs. They didn't, they didn't end up like their father. Amon was a wicked. They had a idolatry, a worship idolatry. Put, did all pray type praise and stuff even in the house of God. But now here comes Josiah and they died. They paid the price because God punished them. They punished them for it. He punished them. But now he used Josiah, the 16th king, the 15th king, then the 14th king, the 13th king, and 12th, you trace it all the way back and trace that lineage all the way up to Josiah. I hear Josiah being the 16th king of Judah, and God is using him. And so now when you think about this in Jeremiah, Jeremiah's conception of the new covenant was, was born through his relationship with God. Because of his personal relationship. Because of everything that God did for him, Jeremiah, and, 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 and the prophetic office that God, being a prophet. So not only did he conceive of what God was doing and wanted to do through him by his own relationship. Because Jeremiah's own relationship was internal and immediate. Because God blessed him before he came forth out of his mother's belly. Out of the womb, God, God knew him before God, he sanctified him. So Jeremiah's relationship was internal. But the thing about it is a blessing because it's all connected to the eternal. So the eternal is connected to the internal and then external. So what God is doing in us internally, it should be reflected externally. And 
so the case with Jeremiah, he said, I know the thoughts. I'm going to give you an expected end in the 29th chapter. And so now here, God is getting ready to do something different because the people could not fulfill God's purpose because they continued to break it. They continued to disobey him. They continued to break his laws, to break his rules. And so now God, and they was, they was trying to serve God from the outward, but there was no ethical change in the way they were living. And so now when we all look back at our own life, I needed a change in my life. Because the way I was doing it on the outside, it, it was not helping me. But then when God filled us with the Holy Ghost, that's what made a difference in our lives. I'm telling you, I'm telling you to, oh God, to God be the glory. And so this was the case here, well, Jew and Israel, they was trying to serve him from the outside, but they kept breaking it. Kept breaking it. Hallelujah. There was no change in the way they was living. My God. So the Lord, within his, his infinite mind, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, days, listen at the 31st verse. He says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. My goodness. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. I'm getting ready to do something different now because their fathers served me from the outward. But now I'm going to put it on the inside. Because, now check this out. I want you to think about something. God put it on the inside so that humanity could not sabotage it. And I've got to get it. I've got to get it past the adversary. Because the adversary, he, 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 he got to Adam and Eve. And a lot of the men of God and Israel, Judah, they broke the law. They did this. They didn't follow my instructions. Did it for a while. And I rewrote the law. Gave it back to them. But now I'm going to put it in a place so that the enemy can use humanity to sabotage it. Oh God, thank God for the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, saying Because if it was left, left up to humanistic, our, our human humanity and humanistic ways, we 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 would have we would have been just like Israel, Judah. Into the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that. What a mighty God. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Because that way, if I do it that way, I, it, it was almost, it's almost in a sense of the of the of a spiritual underground. And they how 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 the Lord used Herod Tuck to free the slaves and Free those men and women and families. And went through, she went through the underground to get past those, those were, that were out to destroy them. And God is no different, hallelujah, when he was establishing his purpose and his plan because he had to make sure that now this new covenant, it will not be stopped by human humanity. Because if human don't want to do it, it still don't stop it. If I don't want to do it, because in time past with Israel, he blessed them as a nation. 
But now I'm getting ready to, to give them a new revolution that I'm going to internal put this thing on the inside and I'm going to individualize it. I'm going to bless them as a whole. This is where we look at it, the church. The church, we are in the church, the ecclesia, the call out body of believers, but then that don't mean everybody in the body of Christ, the ecclesia, the church, is being blessed. And everybody may not be on the same level. And so, but in time past, how he dealt with with, with the nation of Israel, he blessed them as a nation. But now God is blessing as a whole with a focus on individual. Because we can still be in the body together, but that don't mean I'm getting everything I need from the Lord. And so he had to go in a way so that mankind could not because man has sabotaged it so many times they done broke it and there was no change and so what he did because it was the, his, 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 his purpose was connected really eschatological to the, the redemption plan he pushed it all away because there are plenty Plenty of different men's and women's of God in the Old Testament that were were pieces and they were connected to 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 the, the to seeing what God was going to do in the future. And and Jeremiah really was one of those books. You had Moses, you had Isaiah and Jeremiah, and different ones, Ezekiel and Daniel. A lot of their pieces and what God was showing them. Now Jeremiah didn't have all the clarity and understanding to everything but he understood what God was going to be doing and sure God showed them some glimpse of what was to come because what was God was speaking of right here would eventually take place over in the New Testament because now I'm going to put it in their inward parts. My law, my Torah, in the Hebrew, my, my, my Torah, my instructions, my guidance, my leadership. I'm going to put it on the inside of mankind. Listen to what he says. And so now not only does, does, is, 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 uh, and there's a thing of eschatological in that speaking of what would take place in the future and the end times, but then he would also give them new methods, new methodology. Because the way we live now is totally different from what they were doing. I'm telling you, it's totally different. Because now God has put it. This is why we've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Now let's, let's, let's listen at what he says here. He says, not according to the 32nd verse, not according to the agreement that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt. Which my covenant, see, they break it. My agreement, they break it. Although I wasn't husband unto them. Says the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I'm going to give them new methodology, new methods. I'm going to put my law, my Torah, in their inward parts. I'm going to, I'm going to give them a different motivation. Hallelujah. And I'm going to, and, and listen to what he says. And then I'm going to, they will be, let me see, in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. 
And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. See, now he's going to give them, he's going to put it in their inward part, give them a different motivation. And then they shall all know him. Because now we all got an opportunity to know God. And so not only are they going to know, but then I'm also going to pardon and forgive their iniquity, pardon their sins. But it, it, it's going to be because I'm going to put it, I'm going to, new methodology, I'm going to put it, I'm not going to just write it on tablets of stone. But my first method, I'm going to put it in their hearts. And my second method is that they're going to all get a chance to know me. And my third method is that I'm going to allow them, I'm going to forgive them of their sins. What well, Almighty God, we serve, church. And so now when God is creating internal leadership, because now he's moving from the outward. Because they spent all their times serving God from the outward. And God now, our relationship with the Lord is from the inward. It's from the inside. And it's reflected on the outside. Now, what you see here in Jeremiah, you'll go to Hebrews now. Let's go over to Hebrews. Hebrews the eighth chapter. Thank you, Jesus. What Almighty God we serve. Internal by God. This is why, oh, you, you can really appreciate your relationship and what God is doing because when you are going through some things on the outside. You can thank God for the victory that you have on the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you may hit me and attack me on the outside, devil, but I still got the victory on the inside. I'm telling you now. This is, this is why God shifted this thing. He shifted it from the outward because in time past, Israel and Judah, they could not, there was no change in the way they lived. They kept breaking the law. They kept, kept doing what God told them not to do. So God said, I'm going to put it on in the inward parts. I'm going to put it in a place now. Hallelujah. That man won't, God, the devil won't use humanity to just stop it and destroy it. And even though if I have some problem, God's purpose and plan still will go forward. Even if it ain't going forward in me, God will use somebody else to take it forward. Hallelujah. Oh my God, why you look like you done got out of the range, God will have somebody else carrying the baton. I'm telling you, praying for hallelujah. I would say me all the same time. And this is why he moved. He shook. God shook it from the outward. And he put it on the inside. New methods. Put it, I'm going to put it, giving them a different motivation. I'm going to put it in the inward part. I'm going to put it in their minds. Their minds. Be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let this mind, Philippians, let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now in the book of Hebrews, now what we just read here in the in in in, in uh Jeremiah, now go to the 8th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Listen that. Oh my God. I'm going to start at the first verse because uh, now of the things which we have spoken this is the song. We have such an high priest 
Now, according to the old Jewish system, which now they're talking about Jesus here. We have such an high priest, Jesus, who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Now, in time past, Jesus being out of the tribe of Judah, now the high priest, the old system, the old system would not allow him to be a high a priest because the priest only came out of the tribe of Levi. And Jesus being out of the tribe of Judah. So that would have stopped him. So now Jeremiah. Jeremiah is one of the links. From the old. To the new. And there's some other book. Isaiah. From the link to the old. To the new. Daniel. One of, from the old. To the new. Even when you read a lot of things about Moses and all in Genesis, you'll see the link from the old to the new. How God was pointing and Jeremiah was no different. He was just one of the links. He was not the only link, but he was one of the links. Because what God was showing him, that I'm what I'm going to do, Jeremiah, and, and because I formed thee, and I knew thee, and I sanctified and ordained you a prophet. And, and before you came out of your mother's womb, out of the belly, out of the womb, I already knew you. I already had a plan and a purpose for your life. Yes, yes, yes. And so Jeremiah began to walk into it. Because Jeremiah could have, he could have failed himself. He could have yielded to the outward humanity. And he could have failed. But he continued to be committed and sold out. I'm telling you, saints, this is a time that we are living in now. You got to be sold out to the Lord. And you got to be committed now. Because all this stuff that's going on now, you got to have your mind made up. Yeah. That I'm not going nowhere. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the devil may confront me with. I don't care what type of channels I may have to deal with. But I'm going to stay on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, it can't get, it can't get bad enough for me to leave church. My God, I'm in. I'm in. I'm all the way in. Hallelujah. Jeremiah was all the way in, and it is no different today. This is why God used him the way he did. And he was one of the links between the old and the new. Hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you. And so now Jeremiah, I mean here in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, Talking about the greatness of God. He's greater. He's more superior. Listen to what he says. For every high priest. The third verse is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifice. Wherefore it is of necessity. That this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth. He should not be a priest. Seeing that there are priests. That offer gifts according to the law. Who serve unto the example and shadows of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God. It is amazing now because Jesus, when he offered, he offered his body. Now he offered. Now the different priests and stuff, they would go into the, the, the tabernacle and, and they would the, the, they would offer and they would continue making sure the the bread, the show bread, the candlesticks are burning, making sure there's fresh bread, and they continue to do that. But when Jesus offered himself, he offered himself one time. One time. He died one time. Now, in old, they continued to do it. Going into the, you got the outer courts, the holy place, the most holy place. And they would go in there on the table, show bread, the word of God, the incense, 
And then you got the the altar of incense prayer spirit. My goodness. And they would constantly go in there to make sure. But they themselves had to make sure that they was right too. Because when they went in there to go back into the most holy place, they would have to put the blood, the ears, and tongue, thumb, and the thumbs and make sure. And they would strip themselves down into a sacrificial robe because they went back there once, my God, back into the most holy. And they would have to tie themselves. And everybody could not go back there. Because as long as the bells were sounding, that means that they were still alive. This is what, oh God, hallelujah. This is what we should be looking for in people's lives. To see are the bells still sounding. Because when Jesus went back there, he ripped it. He ripped it. He ripped it. And now we all have access. And this is what we've got to be looking for in the life of people. To make sure that bells are still sounding. I can still hear the bells. I can still hear life. They are still moving. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God. Oh, to God be the glory. Listen to what he says here. He says, the fourth verse, for if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law who serve unto the example in the shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God, who he was about to make the tabernacle for. See, says he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is a mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. I'm going to do away with the old outward because they spent their time worshiping God from the outward, but there was no change in the way they were living. But now the covenant now in the church dispensation, grace, and truth. I'm going to prove I got it on the inside. The worship is on the inside, saints. Hallelujah. What people see on the outside is the result of what's happening on the inside. Because if I got myself right on the inside, then they'll see real worship on the outside. They won't see a show. They won't see, but they'll see the manifestation of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But it's on the inside. And that's what he told Jeremiah. I'm going to put my law. I'm going to put my Torah. I'm going to put in my instructions. I'm going to put my guidance. I'm going to put my leading, my leadership. I'm going to put it on the inside. Oh, glory. Listen at the seventh verse now. Eight chapters. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. The same scriptures that he said in Jeremiah. With their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. But now, see, see, he took everything was outward connected. He had the leader. But now, God has given us something. The word is a light to our path and a lamp to our feet. Because now, God led him by the hand because he was a fire by night and a cloud by day. But for us, putting it on the inside, we now got to follow his instruction through the word. 
And his word will lead us. In time past, he took them by the hand. But now we got to follow his word. His word is spiritual. His word is life. And in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So now God is a spirit. But they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if God is a spirit, I've got to be spiritual. And if I'm going to be spiritual, I need his spirit. I need his spirit. And his spirit is the Holy Ghost. And so now what God was showing them, creating, creating internal leadership. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, sis, this is why you ought to be thankful about the Holy Ghost. Because what God, what God was talking to them back then, we are experiencing it now. He showed it. I'm going to put it. I'm going to, I'm going to, when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, symbolize the world. Because they continue not in my covenant and regarded them not, says the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will, the agreement that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws, my Torah in the Hebrew, into their minds, see, in their minds, in their intellect, no matter how, how, what, how educated you are, whatever much knowledge you know, you better make sure you have the Holy Ghost in there. Thank you, Jesus. Because sometimes you can be so knowledgeable and, 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 and you, you will get to the point where you 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 almost trying to challenge whether is there a God. Some people get so smart sometimes. So the the very, very, very knowledge, because he told them that. I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm going to give them a different motivation for they shall all know me no matter whatever whatever if I know whatsoever if I know we all need to make sure that we know the Lord give God some praise Give God some praise. Come on, praise him. Creating internal leadership. Just want to lay some foundation tonight. We're going to dig down into this. Because what he was showing them back there in the old Jeremiah was one of the links between the old point toward the new. You're going to see now why, how God is able to get his knowledge, his wisdom, his instruction. But it comes through the Holy Ghost. And that's what we want to. We're going to stop right here. And we're going to take it up. Creating. Make sure you write that subject down. Creating internal leadership. Because I'm going to show you some more scriptures. How that. He says. I'm going to house of Israel in those days. I will put my law into their minds and write them in their heart. I will be to, to them a God and they shall be to me a people. They shall not teach every man his neighbor to every man his brother. Saying, know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to them. their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. I'm going to I'm going to give them new methods methodology I'm going to give them a different motivation one two they all have the opportunity to know me three I will forgive their sins and even though it is the church as a whole but I can still this thing is going to be what I'm going to do for mankind is geared toward 
not only the internal, but individual. Individual. If you don't want it, I see. it don't stop me from getting it. <laughs> I, thank you, Jesus. That's what, that's what you ought to be excited about. Because as a nation, he blessed them as a nation. But now God allows all of us to have the opportunity to get into the ecclesia, ecclesia of the church, to call out body of believers. And he can individually bless. Your blessings are not, it's not predicated on what I do. God gonna bless you for what you do. So this is why you don't have to worry about what kind of uh, 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 things people speak on you. They can speak all type foolishness on you. But that don't mean that because God is not going to bless you based on them. God going to bless you based on you. And this is what he was doing. This is what he's doing now, saints, in the New Testament. Because everything was as a nation or as a whole with Israel and Judah. But now God is internally, individually blessing you. So I can't get mad with Pastor Howard because he's blessed. I just need to position myself to get blessed. Eternal leadership. And so we want to look, we want to... Because in time past, they break the law. He said, I'm not going to write them on tablets of stone. I'm going to do away with that. I'm going to do away. They just spent all that time outward worshiping, and he still broke the law. And so now God moving from the tablets of stone and told him, break up that foul ground. I'm going to put it on the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And so now this is now but I've got to do it in a way so the enemy don't sabotage it. Because he can use humanity, in which he had used them before. He used Adam, the devil, in the form of a serpent, Eve, to sabotage it. He used different men and women throughout the Bible, in the Old Testament, to sabotage it. And so now when God moved, here in the New Testament, on the day of Pentecost, he brought it in the form of the Spirit. Amen. And that's what we're going to be headed to. And so the devil can't stop that. He may stop me, but he can't stop the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, God. Somebody ought to praise him. He may get me hindered. He may try to sidetrack me. But the devil can't stop the Holy Ghost. And God made sure of that. When he thought he had humanity, yeah, he could have stopped it because they were dealing from the outward. So God said, now I'm going to put this thing on the inside. And so when they stop humanity, they cannot stop the spirit. Love your saints. Somebody give God some praise. Oh, yes. We're going we're gonna to look at it. We're going to bring it on to the New Testament. There's a lot in that. Creating internal leadership. You that are watching, God got to bless you. You got to let God bless you from the inside. From the inside. Amen. Internally. He want to give you a, not only an internal, an individual revolution. God want to change. I'm not driven now, saints. I'm not driven by, 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 by outward compulsion. My driving force is not from the outside. My driving force is not what I drive, the way I live, how much money we have, but my driving force is the Holy Ghost down on the inside. Praising somebody. That's what my compulsions are now. That's where I get my motivation now from. It's what God is doing on the inside. Because if things can be taken away, you can lose that. That can be taken away. But what God 
Now we, that's why he started putting it on the inside. Because they broke it. They broke it before they got it back down. God had to rewrite the law. But now, when man breaks it now, all they have to do is repent. God will have to rewrite now. I love you, church. We're getting it. Oh, man, I feel like running. Son. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. I'm telling you, saints. Oh, I love you. I love you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for those that are listening. Thank you for those that are watching, God. My God, give them something from the inside. Though my outward man perish, but yet inward, I'm being renewed day by day. Hallelujah. Every time the devil hits you on the outside, you ought to feel yourself getting strong on the inside. This is why he put it on the inside. I'm going to put my law into the inward part. I'm going to write it upon their minds and take with their hearts. Oh, God. Love you, saints. Love you. Love you. Praise him, somebody.